Hello, everybody, and welcome back. As always, I am Mateo311, and this is your channel for everything VR related. Today, we have over 25 exciting games coming to the PlayStation VR 2. Plus, I have a handful of games that Sony can announce to turn the PSVR 2 into the must have headset. Now, this list will be separated by ports of existing titles, new games that are on the way, Sony PlayStation VR 2 exclusives, and finally, some titles that we really want to see come to this headset. Speaking of games you really want to see, please let me know down in the comments what game you can't wait to play for the PlayStation VR. 2 or what would be the perfect port or sequel for this headset now there are of course links and timestamps if you want to skip ahead but let's start with some existing vr games that are making their way onto the playstation vr 2. first up is the ultimate party game of betrayal among us based off the extremely popular flat screen version now we get to experience the action from a whole new perspective the anxiety level is definitely higher as you're physically looking over your shoulder mini games capture your attention in a whole new way and backstabbing crewmen is even more fun the only thing that hasn't changed is just how hilarious this game can be to play so if you're looking to have a great VR experience with a bunch of friends, look no further than Among Us VR. Now another port on the way is the undisputed rhythm game champion Beat Saber. VR is almost synonymous with Beat Saber at this point, and this game truly deserves to be on every platform. Slicing blocks to the ever-growing list of songs can be everything from a chill experience that anyone could get into, all the way to pure, adrenaline-filled, extreme competition. Beat Saber is absolutely addictive, and soon PlayStation VR 2 owners won't be missing out. Just like our next title, Walkabout Mini Golf. If you're a fan of the sport in real life, this game is an absolute no-brainer, as it takes the experience to a whole new level. Now, if you're like me and both suck at mini golf, plus it's not really your thing, there's still something oddly enjoyable about this game. It's a great opportunity to socialize with your friends as you move about some truly beautiful and unique environments. Now, if you prefer an environment that's trying to kill you, we have Green Hell. This survival title has proved to me that I won't survive a day in the Amazon. Luckily though, this experience is virtual and I could die as many times as needed. So eventually you'll learn how to craft weapons and tools, forage and hunt for food, and how to survive against both the wildlife and indigenous population. Green Hell VR is a truly intense experience, and I can't wait to see what it looks like on the PlayStation VR 2. And speaking of good looks, we have the Cyberpunk Shooter Lawn. Now this is the first title on today's list that has been ported from a PC VR exclusive game. As such, you can immediately see the graphical difference, and this game plays like Boneworks meets Blade Runner. Now I'm glad to see it coming over to the PlayStation VR 2, as this title definitely deserves a larger audience. Very similar to our next game, Hubris. This is another futuristic sci-fi shooter that has you crash landing on an alien planet. It features some of the best graphics that VR has to offer, a lengthy campaign, satisfying swimming and climbing mechanics, and an overall interesting storyline. There were a few items that kept this title from being an absolute standout, but I know the developers have been hot at work since launch, and I hope the experience that comes to the PlayStation VR 2 is absolutely phenomenal. Now, if you're looking for some more realistic combat, why not jump into the cockpit with Project Wingman? You'll take control of advanced fighter planes, engage in aerial dogfights, or perform some large-scale ground assaults. This single-player experience is designed to strike the right balance between simulator and full-on arcade shooter. But if you prefer to stay grounded, we have the sports trainer, Rezo Player. Whatever your game may be, Rezo Player is designed to improve your sports fitness. There's over 160 levels and a large array of minigames that focus on sports, including basketball, football, soccer, and boxing. So if conditioning is your goal, check out Rezo Player. But if you prefer a horror shooter, we have Afterlife VR. Take on the role of a rookie police officer who finds himself locked in a mental hospital. You'll have to fight your way past not only deranged individuals, but also mutated animals, supernatural entities, and some head-scratching puzzles. There's also a few jump scares along the way, but don't worry because you have telekinesis on your side to help across your journey. And that right there is all of the existing games that are being ported to the PlayStation VR 2 this year, which is an okay lineup, but things start to get a lot more exciting as we look towards future upcoming games. First up is Hello Neighbor Search and Rescue. We're once again jumping into the Hello Neighbor universe, exploring the creepy neighbor's house, but now we're doing it from a VR perspective. The anticipation of getting caught will be so much higher, and this horror puzzle title will have you second guessing your every move. Graphically, this might look like a cute experience, but you're still in for some scares. Now, if you're just looking for the cute puzzle experience, we have another Fisherman's Tale. This is a sequel to a beloved title, and not only are we getting more mind-bending puzzles, but we also have new mechanics, a poetic storyline, and a whole new location to discover. A Fisherman's Tale was one of those games I looked at and figured I'd never really enjoy it, but found it to have some undeniable charm. So if you were a fan of the original, or you're just looking for a new puzzle title, check out Another Fisherman's Tale. Now I'm always looking for some great co-op action, and that's why I can't wait for Ghostbusters Rise of the Ghost Lord. This four-person co-op shooter will have us donning proton packs, sliding traps into place, and utilizing a large array of other ghost tracking tools. 
the Ghostbusters franchise is ideal for a quirky, fun experience, and that's the exact type of VR ride I want to go with my friends on. I just hope it'll have the same replay value as something like After the Fall, or maybe even Left 4 Dead. But if you don't have any friends and just want to hack up some monsters, we have Hellsweeper. From the same developers that gave us the high mobility action title Serento, they are now throwing us into a dark fantasy world. Featuring combat mechanics designed specifically for VR, we'll be conjuring weapons, blasting enemies with spells, or getting up close and personal with some melee combat. This roguelike promises to put the emphasis on challenging and extremely intense combat. So if combat above all else is what you're looking for in a VR game, Hellsweeper VR should be at the top of your list. But if you prefer a storyline, we have Journey to Foundation. Set in the lore-rich world of Isaac Asimov, where a long-standing space-faring dynasty is finally losing its grasp over planets, which will spiral into a series of events, which will cause major hardship for thousands of years. The Foundation foresees this inevitability and is preparing to make the transition as easy as possible. Journey to Foundation has you taking on the role of a spy master, set to infiltrate this group, but ultimately it will be up to you on which side to choose. Above all else, I hope Journey to Foundation does this classic book justice and delivers a compelling storyline. But if you're just looking for some fun, we have Pixel ripped 1978. This is now the third installment in the series, and we're taking on the role of Atari developer, but we'll actually have to go inside the games to help debug them. The Pixel Rip series always offers up a unique array of mechanics, and I'm really excited to see them working with Atari. It'll be an extra blast of nostalgia with a new aged feel. But if you prefer games with more serious themes, we have Behemoth. From the same studio that gave us the Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, we're now taking on the role of a diseased wanderer lost in the frigid wastelands. Not only will you have to survive the environments, but the world is also filled with deadly warriors and towering behemoths. Behemoth VR will have you traveling through otherworldly environments and battling it out with lifelike physics. As of right now, I'm really excited for this title, but I'm just waiting for some actual in-game footage. Now, a game with plenty of in-game footage that I can't make any sense of is Sushi Ben. This is a manga-inspired narrative adventure where you have to save your local sushi restaurant from going out of business. You'll be engaging in an array of exhilarating VR activities as you fend off your greedy landlords from shutting down the restaurant. There's definitely an anime-inspired art style here and plenty of quirkiness, but I'm just not sure what to make of this game. Now, another upcoming title with a unique sense of style is the roguelike shooter The Foglands. Travel into the unknown, fight monsters, scavenge for loot, and make it back before the fog consumes you. This game's definitely given off some strong vibes, as it's a combination sci-fi, western, and horror game. The roguelike genre is a little overplayed in VR, but with the promise of great combat, a story-driven narrative, and unique mechanics, it looks like I'll have to dive into the fog. But probably most exciting of all the new upcoming titles is Lo-Fi. This is another action-adventure dystopian future title, where the majority of civilization has uploaded themselves into a simulation, and those left behind unable to merge are known as the Lo-Fi. You're acting as a futuristic cop, policing a lo-fi slum, and the choices you make or how you spend your time are completely up to you. It's a vast open world with plenty of opportunity and tons of upgrades to purchase, weapons to upgrade, or even toys to collect for your companion. After years in development, this game is finally scheduled to release in 2023, and it's one of my most anticipated games. And that right there is all of the new, non-exclusive titles. It's a nice looking lineup with some truly standout games, but as many of these titles are also releasing on the quest, I'm not expecting some big blockbuster games. But that can change as we move into exclusive titles. But before we do that, this video is brought to you by my sponsor, Kiwi Design. They currently make my favorite Quest to Elite strap, which comes in multiple different versions. You can add an extra battery pack, high quality headphones, or even both. They also have other products like Valve Index style hand straps, and they just introduced a brand new RGB stand. Your controllers and headset magnetically connect. There's a charging indicator so you'll know when your headset's ready to go. And there's plenty of different RGB color options available. There's a link to Kiwi Design down in the description. And don't forget to use discount code MATEO311 for 5% off and to help support this channel. And the first one is Crossfire Sierra Squad. If you wanted to jump into a Michael Bay movie with one of your buddies, well then look no further than Crossfire Sierra Squad. This game is pure adrenaline-filled shooter action. There's over 60 campaign missions, 39 different weapons, 17 unique enemies, and you can recruit up to three of your friends for some co-op action. It's everything I'm looking for in a VR shooter right now, and I can't wait to join you guys in game, which is extremely similar to our next title, Firewall Ultra. Another high-quality shooter that's a sequel to one of the PlayStation VR 1's most popular exclusive titles, and the sequel looks like it's bringing both the graphics and combat to the next level. Featuring both PvP and PvE multiplayer combat, this shooter should be right for everyone. Now your favorite contractors from the original title are back, and they're also introducing the former elite military operative Havoc. So this title also comes with its own unique sense of style. 
And speaking of style, we're also getting the single player shooter Synapse. From End Dreams, the same studio that brought us the action packed title Fract, we're now jumping into this monochromatic world where the only color you see will come from the blood of your enemies, explosions, and your telekinetic powers. This is an opportunity to unleash your inner anti hero and eliminate all enemies with brutal firepower. I was a huge fan of the amount of action that Frack delivered, and this game is looking way more intense. And speaking of intensity, that Resident Evil 4 remake is getting a VR mode. Thanks to the quest, we already know how good Resident Evil 4 can be in VR, but that game featured 18 year old graphics. Now we're bringing things up to 2023 standards, with whole new portions and cutscenes of the game completely redone. This title is a must play for any horror or Resident Evil fans. But if you can't handle horror in VR, why not get into some iconic military aircraft fights with Aces of Thunder, featuring physically accurate flight and damage models similar to the popular military game War Thunder, we now have a title designed specifically for VR. Both flight sim fans and history buffs should be excited, and we'll be taking these battles online for some PvP. And that right there concludes all the officially confirmed PlayStation VR 2 exclusives releasing in 2023. Now, if Sony truly wants to excite their audience and turn the PSVR 2 into a number one selling device, here's some additional games that are absolute no-brainers. The first is a sequel to Astrobot Rescue Mission. Astrobot Rescue Mission was easily VR's best platformer across all of the platforms out there. It had a high production value, excellent level design, undeniable charm, and the developers knew how to highlight VR, having enemies attack both Astro and the headset wearer, plunging you into exotic locations, utilizing scope and scale to its fullest, and having enemies get up close and personal with you. Any type of Astrobot sequel would be a welcome addition to the PSVR 2. Now, the next title I expect will be a surprise for most people. We need a full spin-off of The Persistence. This was an absolutely fantastic horror-themed roguelite, and the studio Fire Sprite that developed this game is now owned by Sony, and their most recent work was on Horizon Call of the Mountain. Rather than returning for another roguelike, which is completely overdone in VR, we need a high-quality single-player story-driven campaign. This would basically become the dead space of VR. And sticking with sequels, Star Wars Squadrons is a worthy title to redo. The intense Starfighter action lends itself so well to VR, and it gave us both an excellent single-player campaign and some highly competitive online PvP. They don't really need to do anything special for this title, just give us more of the same, but if they want to give us access to cruiser-class ships, I definitely wouldn't say no. But moving out of sequels and onto other IPs that Sony really needs to bring to their headset, we have the obvious first choice, Half-Life Alex, Arguably the best VR game ever made, featuring stunning graphics, a compelling storyline, and some truly intense combat. It's been rumored that a PlayStation VR 2 version of this game has been in the works for quite some time, and there's honestly no reason for Valve to hold on to this as an exclusive. Now, if the rumors are true, I would expect to see this title pop up around the holiday season, as it would be a great game that helps sell the headset, just like our next three titles can be. So far, Sony has only utilized one of their major exclusive titles in VR, but other games like God of War would make so much sense. While making the entire campaigns playable in VR might not be the right approach, physically embodying Kratos or Atreus in a side campaign similar to Horizon Call of the Mountain would be absolutely fantastic. There are many aspects of the God of War combat that lend themselves exceedingly well to VR. Atreus utilizes a bow, and there's also plenty of climbing. This is a match made in heaven, and I really hope Sony makes it happen. Now, a title that would be a little bit harder to sell in VR but has a ton of potential is a Spider-Man game. Obviously, whipping through New York City brings up some motion sickness concerns, but after playing hours of Swarm with absolutely zero discomfort, I think it's absolutely doable. It might be harder to emulate some of Spider-Man's signature moves, but things like Spidey Sense can change the combat into something like Super Hot. Punching enemies and shooting webs is easy enough, and I'm sure there's a few clever solutions for more advanced combat. And finally, VR is all about immersion, and that's why the world of The Last of Us could lend itself so well. Traveling through desolate cities with overgrown vegetation, sneaking past clickers while trying to hold your breath, and scavenging for survival with all odds against you make for a truly compelling VR game. This reminds me a little bit of Into the Radius, which is an absolutely beloved title. Now, Sony is in a very advantageous position. Not only do they have the rights to utilize these games, but with so many assets already produced, they don't have to start at ground zero. Now, I truly hope some of these projects are already underway, because these are the type of games we're gonna need if Sony plans to impress us with the PSVR 2. Now, I'm sure I missed a few amazing options, so let me know what they were down in the comments, or just reply with what you think the future of the PlayStation VR 2 looks like. And that was today's video brought to you by my dad, Mateo311. If you enjoyed it, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. Consider, su consider subscribing. And consider subscribing. Consider subscribing. Consider subscribing. <laughs>
<laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys on next time. We'll see you guys on next time.